Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever, wherever you are, twirlers. I just thought I'd, I'd do a couple of videos in elements. Uh, and one of them is we can we can obviously twirl from, from a single image. But it's a little bit more challenging if we had more images. If we had, say, this one flipped to this side and then the whole lot flipped to the bottom. So we've got maybe four images to be able to start as a twirl. And it gives us a whole new dimension to, to go to. So I thought we'd look at how to do that from a Photoshop point of view, not using actions. OK, so first thing we need to think of is we, we've got to get this image and we want to flip it into this space here. So we really need to extend the canvas to, to get us over to this side. But we can do that in a, in a little bit of a sneaky way rather than using the extend canvas command. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll start off by duplicating this layer. So I'm going to right click, duplicate layer and say OK. And I'll rename that flip just so I know which one it is. And now I'm going to use the transform command. So I'm going to do control and T for transform. And then if we look down here in the transform options, we've got this little square doohickey here. And at the moment, the center spot is gray. And that means that this is the point of rotation. This is where we rotating round. Well, what I want to do is to rotate round this point here, because I want to flip all this over to that side. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to click in that little ball there. And you'll see that center point moves over and locks itself onto here. Right, now all I've got to do is right click and flip the layer horizontal. Now that's flipped it, but you can see you can't see the image. You can see where it is because of the bounding box. But if you imagine that this grey area is called the pasteboard, and the pasteboard has a hole in it, which is where we see the image. Well, this image now has gone behind the pasteboard. So if I click the tick, we can see that we can't see it. But it's still there. So what I've got to do is to go and find it now. So I'm going to go to image and resize and reveal all. And what this will do is it'll reveal anything that's under the pasteboard. So now I've, I've made my hole bigger in the pasteboard and I can see both my images. That's perfect. I've got two layers now and I'm going to flatten them down. So I'm going to click the little flyout menu. I know you can't see it because it goes off the screen, but select merge visible. And what that'll do is merge them all down to one layer. Right. We'll repeat it now, but in a downward direction. So right click, duplicate the layer and click OK. And we'll call this one flip as well, just so we know which one it is. And then I'm going to use transform again. So I'm going to do control and T for transform. But this time I'm going to move my rotation point down to the bottom. I'm going to click on there and you can see it locks itself onto the bottom here. And then I'm going to right click, but this time I'm flipping the layer vertically. And again, it's gone behind the pasteboard, but that's no worry. We just click on that. And then we're going to go back up to image and resize and reveal all again. And there we've got it flipped twice now. I'll just zoom out a little bit and do control and minus. If you find you've got a line here, it just means that it's just flipped, but just not exactly to the pixel. So what we can do is if we make sure that top layer's active, then if we hold the control key down, we can move that layer just a little bit so we can get rid of that layer. So with the up arrow and down arrow keys, we can move that layer till the match up. Now that means we've got a little bit of white at the bottom. That's no problem. What we're going to do is crop that out then. So we'll go to the crop tool and we'll click and drag. So we just don't include that bit at the bottom. And we'll say OK. Last thing to do is flatten it down. So we're going to go to the flyout menu again and merge visible. And here you are now. 
you've got a four image background image all ready to do your twirl. I hope that was helpful. Join me in the next episode of Twirling for Photoshop Elements. I'll see you there. Bye for now.